What's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again with another LaunchBox tutorial. Today we're going to be going over emulating Nintendo 3DS with RetroArch. Now there is a standalone emulator out there called Citra, but the core is built into RetroArch. It is experimental, but in my testing I have had really good luck with it, and it's much simpler to set up this way. You can always use the standalone Citra emulator if you'd like to, but in this video I'm going to be showing you how to do it with RetroArch. First thing you're going to need is RetroArch set up inside a launch box. If you haven't done that, I have done a tutorial. I'll leave a link in the description. When you're done setting it up, come on back and we'll get 3DS set up. First things first, we need to open up RetroArch and download the Citra Core. I'm going to do that from right here because I'm emulating my SNES games with RetroArch. I'm just going to right click, open RetroArch. If you don't have this option, head over to your launch box directory, emulators, RetroArch, and open it up from here. Now that we're inside of here, we're going to go to Online Updater, Core Updater, and we're going to scroll down until we find the Nintendo 3DS emulator, Citra. We're just going to click on it, it's going to download, automatically extract, and we're good to go. One last thing before we leave RetroArch, a lot of people forget to do this. Let's set up a menu toggle hotkey. We're going to go over to Settings, Input, Menu Toggle Gamepad Combo. Mine is set to L3 R3. So when I'm emulating a game with RetroArch, if I press down on both of my thumbsticks, it'll bring me back inside of here. We're going to need to change a few settings when we start up our first 3DS game. This will just make it much easier. With all that set up, we can exit RetroArch. Next thing you're probably going to want to download is the text file in the description. This shows you the associated platform and the default command line parameter. It just makes it much easier to copy and paste. And finally, you'll need some 3DS games. I have a few on my desktop in a folder called Nintendo 3DS. So all of these down at the bottom here are named correctly. If you have a 3DS game that says decrypted at the end, or a number at the beginning, we need to delete this or LaunchBox will not detect it correctly. We can't download images. So we're just gonna delete this. Make sure decrypted is deleted also. Now LaunchBox will be able to detect which game this is and download the correct box art. So what I like to do is place my games inside of my LaunchBox directory before we even start importing. Just makes it a little faster because we don't need LaunchBox to import it for us. We're going to navigate to our LaunchBox directory. It's usually located under your C drive, users, whatever your username is, LaunchBox. We're going to head over to games. And we're just going to paste this whole folder right in there. Make sure you're not putting it inside of another folder. All right, so my games are now in my LaunchBox games directory. It's time to import them. We're going to open up LaunchBox, Tools, Manage Emulators. We need to find RetroArch, Associated Platforms, and at the very bottom, we're going to add a new one, Nintendo 3DS. We'll also need to add a default command line parameter. It's in the text file that you can download from the description. You can just copy and paste this. Mine's already loaded up here. Make sure it's checked. Press OK and close. Now it's time to import our games. We're almost ready to start playing. Tools, Import, ROM Files. This is the Import Wizard. Click Next. I'm going to add that full Nintendo 3DS folder. LaunchBox is automatically going to sort the games out for me. Need to find that. Nintendo 3DS. OK. And Next. Platform for imported games. We can use the drop down here. Or we can just type in Nintendo 3DS. Click Next. What emulator do you want to use? RetroArch. Next. I'm going to use the files in their current location because I already placed them in my LaunchBox directory. Would you like to download metadata for your games? Yes. I'm just going to leave the first one checked. Search for game information from the LaunchBox Games database. Next. Here's all the artwork we can download if it's available. 
I just leave everything checked. Next. Would you like to download media from EMU Movies? Yes, I would. I have an account over there. If you don't, I recommend signing up. Next. Would you like to specify any custom options? No, not for 3DS. Next. So here's the name of the games we're importing, the file location, and the extension, .3ds. Click Finish. We'll get a progress bar at the bottom. Just be patient. It's going to download all of our metadata and artwork. My eight 3DS games were imported successfully. I'll click OK. Over in the left-hand column, we should have a Nintendo 3DS section. So it looks like it scraped all of my games correctly. I'm just going to start a game, Dragon Ball Z. Double click. It's going to launch RetroArch for us. I do have my FPS listed in the lower left-hand corner. And as you can see, this is set up like a 3DS. It has a top screen and a bottom screen. Now the reason we set up that menu toggle key is so we can go in here and change it. Mine's set to L3 and R3. I'm going to go ahead and press it. From here, we're going to scroll down to Options. Now there's a lot of options in here. Only thing I usually ever change is my resolution scale factor. This will make the game look a lot better, but you need decent hardware to do this. I'm going to leave it at 1 for now. Scroll down. Screen Layout Positioning. Default Top Bottom Screen. I don't like it this way when I'm on a big screen, so I'm going to go to large screen, small screen. We'll have one large screen and one small screen. There's some other settings in here. Most of the time, I don't mess with any of this. So I'm going to back up once, and I'm going to go to Save Core Overrides. Now we're going to scroll back up to the top and resume. As you can see, we got a big screen and a small screen. So obviously the Nintendo 3DS did have a touch screen. You can either use your mouse or if you're using a controller with two analog sticks, you can use your right analog stick. I'm using an Xbox One Bluetooth controller. We're just gonna scroll over, tap to touch the screen, press start. I'll start a new game. I'll go to Rocky Area. And you're now playing Nintendo 3DS with RetroArch. So the Citra emulator is a very young emulator. There are still a lot of games that don't work correctly, but there are hundreds that play perfectly. Just like this one here. I'm getting 60 FPS in this, and I can even go up with my resolution a little bit, because my hardware will handle it. Really easy to set up. Now to exit the emulator, you can either press escape on your keyboard, or if you set up a hot key, you can use those keys on your controller. And that's pretty much it for this video, guys. We really appreciate you watching. All the games you see here listed work pretty well, except for Luigi's Mansion. This does have a lot of bugs, even in the standalone version of Citra. But everything else emulates pretty good, 60 FPS. So I hope you got 3DS up and running inside a launch box using RetroArch. It's fairly simple to do once you get the hang of it. Don't forget, I do have that text file in the description. You can go ahead and download it now. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe to the LaunchBox channel for more great content. And like always, thanks for watching.